Welcome, sweet friends, to the channel Frugal Money Saver. My name is Emmy. My husband is Paul. We're so happy you have joined us today. First thing, shout out to my husband for cutting, well, trimming and coloring my hair yesterday. I think he did a great job as usual and you are appreciated, thank oh, you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so we had a spa day for me yesterday. The reason I mentioned that Paul cut my hair and colored it is because we are talking about a no spend, low spend January in this video. We're gonna share tips with you on how to have a successful low spend, no spend. We're gonna motivate you with figuring out why you're doing this. And of course, we have to get into the kitchen and make a sweet Christmas treat, or really anytime treat. We're also going to be showing you a free frugal find that we were blessed with. So sit back, relax, let's get right to this video. So the first thing we wanna talk about is our no spend, low spend January. We have been doing this no spend, low spend January, I guess about three or four years now. And we always do a prep video before that. And this is going back years. And this year is no different. We wanna get you excited, we wanna get you motivated. So what is a low spend, no spend January? What it is basically is you pay all essential bills and purchases. So what is essential? Food, bills, electric, housing, mortgage, rent, insurances, medications, doctors, all those things are essential, meaning you do all of them. The only thing that you are not doing is buying those extra, those fluffs, those feel good, I want them now purchases. That means no eating out, packing a little snack or a meal if you're gonna be out and about. It also means no coffees, no new clothes, no impulse purchases, things like that. Now you can also do a low spend month which means that you will set a budget and stick with it. So let's say your low spend month for extras or non-essential purchases is maybe $25 so that if you see a clearance item, you could pick it up. So it's entirely up to you. But a no spend month does not mean you don't pay essential bills or, or doctor medication. Things like that have to be paid for. It's all the little extras that add up over the month. So that's where we're starting with. And Paul and I will be joining you all the way. And those of you who have been with us for a while know for a fact that January is Paul's birthday month. And we have gotten creative through the years. And before we started, I asked him again, do you want to have a no spend birthday? And he was like, yep, I have no problem with it. So we will keep you posted. The first thing I want you to consider before you begin and commit to this journey is why do you want to do it? Are you doing it just for the challenge of it? Or are you doing it because you're gonna take that money and put it towards something you really want? Or maybe to put it towards paying down debt a mortgage, put into your retirement fund, whatever it is. Figure out why you're doing it and then hold that reason close to your heart and refer back to it time and time again. If maybe you have a slip up, listen, it might happen. We're all human, no big deal. Pick yourself up, brush yourself off and begin again the next day. But by referring to your motive over and over, it will keep you on track. So that's the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to figure out why you are doing this. Number two, make a list of things you want to accomplish during your no spend, low spend month. What is something new you wanna learn? What is something you wanna revisit and do over again? What movies do you wanna watch? What books do you wanna read? What friends do you wanna gather with? Put this down on paper, put it in your phone. So if you're feeling kind of like, I wanna spend, refer back to that list and that list will give you ideas and encouragement. I wanna learn how to make 
Amish not rag rugs. They're like a hand done rag rug and I really want to learn that. So think of something you want to learn new. Number three, this is going to be a big one. Meal plan. I know Emmy, you say meal plan all the time, but for the month of January, I really encourage you to do that. Look around at what you have. Be creative with pantry meals freezer meals, borrow some library books. Maybe you want to learn how to cook a different cuisine. And by meal planning, you're going to know exactly what you're eating every night. So guess what? You're not running through the drive through You're not going out to eat. You're not ordering DoorDash or Deal Dash. I don't know, whatever it's called, where they bring food to your door because you are prepared and you are ready. And also, I'm gonna say it, if you see frozen pizza on sale or a bag of ravioli on sale, get it, put it in the freezer. Or if you're making extra, make extra and freeze some food. If that impulse hits that you wanna go out to eat, well, you know you can pull something out of the freezer and it'll be ready in no time. Practice gratitude daily. As you go through this no spend, low spend month, I want you to practice gratitude. I want you to think every day how much you have already and how thankful you are for everything you have. So if that impulse to buy new shoes hits, open your closet, look at how many pairs of shoes you have and be thankful. By practicing gratitude, it gives us a sense of fulfillment, it gives us a sense of wealth, it gives us a sense of satisfaction because we look around and realize how darn blessed we are and how much we already have. And the question comes into our mind, do we really need more? And that will really help on your low spend, no spend month. Number five, realize we're going to be on this journey with you all the way for the entire month. If you want to come to our channel and just leave a comment and say, hey, Em, I need some encouragement. I will be there to answer and cheer you on. And we hope you'll do the same for us because we're human. There's going to be times we're going to be like, I'm thinking I want that. And we're going to have to be like, no, not this month. We're going to do this together. We're going to encourage each other and it's going to be super successful. Number six, be happy during this no spend month and have fun. Have fun. Make it a game. I cannot encourage you enough to just enjoy this time of having more money in your pocket. Use your local library. If there are any free events, and there are year round in communities, free concerts, free book readings, so many free things are being offered that we don't always take advantage of. If the weather permits, get outside, even if it's a few minutes, breathe the air, look at nature, visit with friends have people over for a meal or just a snack. Be resourceful. Look around your own house and see what you can play with. Honestly, puzzles, games, books, movies, there's so much. And the library, I am going to say it again, is a wealth, a wealth of knowledge, information, entertainment, everything you could ask for, and it is completely free to us. So that is just such an asset that I encourage you to use for this low and no spend January. We hope these tips were super helpful and encouraging. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments section and we will be sure to clarify everything. Now we're going to get into the kitchen and we are going to make a small batch of the most delicious sugar cookies I've ever tasted. I am not a sweet eater. You know that if I have a cookie or a bowl of chips, I'm gonna grab the bowl of chips. I'm definitely a savory food type of person. But these cookies <laughs> were so good. Now this is a small batch. It only makes six, but they are big cookies. And it uses minimal ingredients. You don't need to refrigerate the dough. There's just a ton of wins with this recipe. Let's turn this camera around and get into the kitchen. I'm gonna be sharing with you a super simple, small batch of sugar cookies with an extra special little twist to them. This is gonna make six cookies, so it's a perfect small batch if you just wanna mix this up for even an evening dessert. So what you're going to need is a third cup 
of sugar, which we're gonna put that right into the bowl, four tablespoons of melted cooled butter. We're gonna add that to the sugar, one egg yolk, and make sure that you save the whites to use in an omelet or for another recipe, and a half a teaspoon of vanilla. And we're just gonna whisk this together until it is completely incorporated. Now you can see how creamy this looks. Perfect. And now we're adding a half a cup of all-purpose flour plus two tablespoons. So it's a half a cup of flour and two tablespoons of flour. A quarter teaspoon of baking soda and then an eighth teaspoon of salt. But my butter has salt in it, so I am not going to add any more. Now with this, we just want to mix it till it's combined. We don't want to over mix it. We just want to incorporate it. You can see how beautiful this dough came together. I preheated my oven to 350 degrees. One of the really neat things about this dough is it does not need to be refrigerated before you make the cookies. And a lot of sugar cookie doughs call for the dough to be refrigerated. So what we're going to do is kind of eyeball this and we're gonna make six balls. Now again, this is a small batch. So what you're going to do is possibly cook this when you're cooking dinner or when you're doing other baking, but these are just a great way to not overindulge, but still have a perfect sweet treat. You can bake them on either parchment paper or a baking mat. I rolled the cookies out as close as I can get uniform balls and I have some pretty sprinkles here. They're pink and blue sugar crystals. Now I'm going to show you what we're going to do. This is going to make this really unique. Do you have an old-fashioned glass in the house maybe with a pretty bottom? We're going to gently use this as our cookie stamp. Remember your handy dandy butter wrappers that I tell you to keep? Take a butter wrapper and grease the bottom of the glass. Then you're going to take that glass, put it in the sprinkles. Can you see what we have on the bottom? And then you're going to gently press down on the cookie. You're using glass, so be careful. Well, this is going to be so pretty. Now, once you do that, if you want, just take a little bit extra of the sprinkles, put them right on. So we're going to bake these at 350 degrees for about eight to 10 minutes. We're gonna keep an eye on it until the tops of them seem dry. These cooked for 10 minutes. Look at how big they got and they look wonderful. Can you see the pretty imprint? You can't see it as well as if you were right here, but it's definitely there. I'm gonna let them cool on the tray for two minutes and then I will transfer them to a wire rack to cool completely. These look beautiful. Look at these cookies. They are beautiful. I'm gonna turn them over so you can see the back perfectly browned. They look so good. They smell amazing. Paul's going to taste one. Let's see what he thinks. We're going to try these Christmas cookies right now and the house smells wonderful with them baking. Look at this. This is just a beautiful cookie. Let's try it out. They're crispy, perfect for dunking if you're a dunker. There's that nice cookie, Christmas cookie flavor that we'd only get once a year. Do you think they're too crispy? No. No, actually, I like it like this. I guess if you baked a little less, it would stay softer. Yeah, you could. But that's a perfect bake on there. Yeah, I thought know? so, too. It really is. And then these beautiful sprinkles you put on Yay. there. Yeah, this is great. What a fun thing to do. 
It's frugal, it's easy, and makes the house smell great. This is Paul approved. Crispy, light, buttery. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you about these cookies except make them. Very delicious, they're beautiful. And when you use the bottom of the glass as a stamp, just please use it gently, it's glass. But oh my goodness, what a beautiful design it made with the sugar. They were elegant. They were elegant and delicious. So that was a two thumbs up from both of us. Now we want to share with you a frugal free find. There is a small thrift shop called Bird in Hand Renews It in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And in the back of this thrift store, they have a giant wagon. I guess it's a wagon because they pull it in and out every night filled with free items. Let me show you. So we pulled behind the wagon and we were looking through it. And you got to be careful because there were some broken objects in there. So you use cautious. Don't reach your hand in if you ever stop by there. But one of the boxes had something that was tailor-made for Emmy. I could not believe this. You all know how I love vintage items. These were in a box and I couldn't believe it. I love any kind of vintage items. These were in there, a complete set of eight. Now, granted, they are dirty. There's paper stuck to them. The good news is there wasn't one chip, one crack. They were wrapped in newspaper, and they are absolutely stunning. And these are what are called booby glasses. Yes, I know that's a funny name. They were very big in the 1950s. I'm going to show you a screenshot of what three of them sell for on eBay. Now we're going to show you what they look like after we hand washed each and every one of them. We washed each of these glasses like four times just to make sure they were clean and sterile. Look at how beautiful and sparkly and elegant they are. So it was just a great fine and we were very blessed. Well, we thank you so much for sharing this time with us. We hope this video was encouraging. We're excited to start our no spend, low spend in a couple of weeks with you. Our question of the day is, come our low and no spend January, what is something you want to learn to do? Or what is something you're looking forward to doing? Please share that down in the comments section with us because I know it will not only encourage us, it'll encourage our viewers. And this way we can trade ideas. That idea I got to learn how to make the Amish rugs was from one of our viewers. So think about something you'd like to learn, you want to do, you want to revisit, you want to create, and share that down below with us. We thank you so much again for being here. We ask that you please give this a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Make sure your notification bell is on. We do a video every Tuesday and Friday at 2 o'clock Eastern Time. We ask you to be well. We ask you to be safe. And above all, we wish you blessings. Until our next video, may God greatly bless you. I want to learn how to make Amish not toothbrush rag rugs. Yes, I do. <laughs> and Say that again. That's what it's called, Amish not toothbrush rag rugs. Okay. I'm going to leave that in because Paul just asked me to say it again. So, But that's really the name of these rugs. If you heard him, he's like, say it again.